Okay, we're going to continue talking about um, residual diagnostics in this tutorial. So we're going to look at how we determine whether or not a model really is what we hope it to be. So without any further ado, let's go on. Um, and we've talked about goodness of fit. Another way of thinking about goodness of fit in terms of instead of something like, say, R squared is going to be... Um, things like looking at these residuals, actually plotting the residuals and looking at other types of diagnostics that we can do to see if there's problems with, uh, uh, with the model. So as we have in the previous tutorials, we're going to use this food data. Um, we have food expenditure and income. We're going to create a linear model that predicts food expenditure using um, average household income. Um, we have stored our data in a data frame named food and our mo linear model in a model called mod one. Okay, so let's look at this plot. So the fitted um, and residual values. So the first thing that we note when we look at R is um, if you're used to other um, programming languages like say C++ or Java or something like that, you're kind of used to using dots in a different way than we use them in R. In R, a dot really basically means a white space. It's kind of the replacement for a white space. Um, and the um, to access, you know, bits with inside an object. So if I think of an object as a box, all right, so I've got this box here. And this is an object, and I put stuff in it. Well, I could have different kinds of stuff, so different things inside that box. I could actually have other boxes inside of that box, and the way I'm going to access those is by using the dollar sign in R. Okay, so that's the idea in R. I'm going to use this dollar sign, and so when I look at this box, mod one, which is our linear model, it's got another littler box inside of there called fitted values. And that's a vector of all the Y hats. And I can access that. Okay, let me get a better color here. Let's see, I like that one better. Um, I can access that by going mod one and then using the dollar sign and then put the other bit that I want in there. So the fitted values, I can get that, my residual values. I can also get in that way. And here I'm just putting them in fitted and resid. Those are just um, abbreviations for that. And, and so if I'm thinking about these components, okay, I, I want the fitted values, i.e. the Y hats, that's this one, and the residual values, i.e. the air terms or those E's, right? That's these guys. Okay, easy peasy. We'll just keep on going. And so let's start out by fitting our, doing a plot of our actual versus fitted. Now we're going to use base R for this. So in this plot, we're going to take and put the fitted values on our Y axis and our actual values on our X axis. And the way we do that is with this plot function. And we've got these great named um, arguments in R, so we don't have to worry about, well, which comes first, X or Y and whatnot. You just, okay, X equals, all right, the actual, um, we go within food and we want food expenditure. So the food expenditure is a part inside of food, um, the food object, so we use the dollar sign. And then mod one, we get these fitted values out of that. Okay, and then we're going to add on to this a line that goes through zero and has a slope of one. Now, why would I want that line? Well, that's just a ray through the origin with a slope of one is all the values where x equals y. This is the function, all right, y equals x. In other words, if my um, actual value falls on this line, yeah, sorry falls on this line, then my y hat equals my y. So basically what we want to see is our data as close as possible to be a band around that line. 
Okay, that's really messy. And as close to this line as possible. Okay, I mean, that's what it is. And, well, what we see here is that our data really doesn't do that. It just looks so icky. All right, so this the model that we've got here is probably not the best model in the world. Um, and we probably need to do some more stuff to it. So I'm going to look here. This is what I've simulated this data to be basically perfect. Um, it's about as good as you're going to see. Um, we see this nice, even band right around that um, our equilibrium line, or where y equals y hat. It's all kind of tightly clustered. It's evenly spread all over the place. Um, that's about the ideal of a fitted versus residuals plot. Or I'm sorry, no, that's not a fitted versus residual. This is, sorry, this is, that's a mistake. This is actual versus fitted. This is the fitted value or the y hat. This is the actual y, or in this case, the actual value of food expenditure. Okay. Okay, so let's keep going. Now let's look at what is my favorite plot, the residual versus fit plot. If I only get to make one plot of my of my model, first of all, why do I only get to make one plot of my model? I don't know why I only get to make one plot of my model, but if I only get to make one plot of my model, this is the one I think I wink. Um, it just so much stuff can be seen in this residuals versus fit plot. It's really, really handy. Okay, and it's just one of the best diagnostic plots out there. We can draw this with the plot function, no problem, but we can get a nicer one with ggplot. Okay, and ggplot is a package. It's actually part of what's called the tidyverse, which is an ecosystem of packages or group of packages that are all for data visualization and data wrangling or you know getting your data into shape. Okay, so we can really make some, I mean, ggplot is just really, really uber cool when it comes to plotting um, and displaying data and visualizing data. So we're going to use that one. Um, and well, all right, so here's how we install it. And of course, you know, you've got my funky way of doing it in that I'm going to say, all right, I want to know, do you have the tidyverse installed? Tidyverse is just a group of packages that gets all installed at once. It includes ggplot. If you do, okay, fine, go on, load the load the library. And here I'm just saying, okay, don't tell me a whole bunch of stuff about how you loaded the library. Just go do it. Do it silently. Um, but if you haven't, if you do need to install it, if it isn't there, well, then go ahead and install it. All right, easy peasy. And of course, we've got our install packages command that would install the um, package and the library command. OK, that command actually loads it into memory so that we can use it. All right, so we're going to keep going. Got that taken care of. Next. All right. So for some of you, this is easy and no problem. Don't worry about it. You're saying, what is all this stuff? Why? I'll just do it myself. And for some of you, you're saying, eh, okay, I don't know what's going on here. Well, I've given you a function that does the plot. Dot, I call it plot.fitted. This will make a really nice little um, uh, fitted versus um, residual plot. Uh, it makes it nice. It also plots out the um, plus or minus a band for plus or minus one standard error of regression from the um, from zero and two standard errors of regression from zero. So that's what this is doing. Um, and really all you need to know about this is this plot.fitted. You can come on to the um, website and copy this code into whatever it is you're doing and then use this function. So let's have a look at what it is. So plot.fitted, I just pass to it my linear model and I get this plot. It's going to tell me what my dependent variable is, and it's going to put the residuals on the vertical axis and the fitted values on the horizontal axis. Now, 
what's going on here? Well, this doesn't look very good. Let me let me zoom in on this graph just a little bit. Um, this looks like a big trumpet, all right, like this. This is not what it should look like. We want it to be kind of all right in here with a few points out here and then just a few outside of those those bands. That's what we want to see. And what do we see? Ah, we see this is probably what we call heteroscedasticity. Um, and we'll talk about that in a, in a later chapter. But um, what this is indicative of when you have these patterns where the spread of the residuals isn't constant or consistent, it means there's probably something going on here. There's probably some variation, some information out there that we're not taking advantage of. Either we've got the wrong functional form, you know, we should have logs instead of being linear. We should have um, more explanatory variables. I don't know, something, okay? There's a number of things that could be, but basically that's usually indicative of something weird going on that we should probably investigate. So what should that plot look like? Okay, here is an example from the data that I simulated earlier. Um, so I simulated this data to be basically perfect. And notice, even though I simulated it to be perfect, there's always, you know, okay, that one looks like a little bit of an outlier. Yeah, it just happens. But in general, we have very few points that are above and below all of this band. Most of the points are within the dark band and nearly all of them are within that shaded region. That's exactly what we want to see. And and it just looks like it's somebody kind of took and spread the points with a butter knife all over the whole thing and nice and smooth and evenly. Um, that's really what you're looking for. You just want to see no pattern. There should be no pattern in this is really what you want to see. Um, and when you start to see pattern in the residuals, that means you need to step back and say, okay, why do I see that pattern there? That probably shouldn't be there. What do we do about it? Okay, so the next thing is one of the assumptions in linear regression is that those residuals are normally distributed. Now, I'm going to say this is probably the least important of all of the assumptions that we have within um, linear regression. And in general, I just don't worry about it too, too much. Um, because linear regression is basically extremely robust to this assumption of normality of the residuals. Um, so even if your residuals aren't normally distributed, as long as you have a fairly large sample, so you have enough observations to actually run the regression, that normality isn't that that important. Um, but it does; it is worth um, plotting the residuals, at least a histogram of the residuals to see what's going on, because sometimes if you do have a weird looking histogram with your residuals, it's a sign that you should go back and double check things. Um, you may find that you're missing a variable or there's some skew or there you've got you've got some kind of issue in the data that you need to take care of. And it's just one more place where you can catch it. Um, well, I'm going to give you another function. It's, I call it plot.normal. Um, in this case, I'm just using base R to do it. Um, and all it's going to do is plot for you a, a histogram of your residuals and superimpose over the top of that a normal distribution. And so a normal curve. And okay, here's the distribution for the histogram of our model, our food model that we've been talking about. Again, it's not perfect. But basically what I'm looking for is I want it to basically be kind of high in the middle, narrow in the ends, and kind of sort of symmetric-y. All right, so this one actually is not too terrible. Um, so what would it look like in an ideal circumstance? Well, again, this is the residuals from our simulated model that is simulated to be perfect. And even here, you can see, well, there's some issue there. That's not exactly normal. It's pretty darn close. Um, and I would say, generally speaking, it's close enough. Um, but, you know, even our simulated model that's designed, you know, I, I, I actually generated the data to kind of hit all of these things perfectly. Um, you know, it doesn't even quite get it exact but still it's pretty darn close. And I would say it's close enough. 
All right. Well, that is our basic tour of residual diagnostics. We'll come back to this over and over again throughout the semester. Um, and we will um, basically, when in doubt, plot the residuals. Always, always, always plot the residuals. Plot the data. Plot the residuals. It won't catch everything. In fact, there's a lot of things that you will not catch by just looking at the residuals. But there's a lot of things that are really, really kind of monumentally stupid. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Just clean out your desk kind of mistakes that will show up in the residuals. So always, always, always plot them and have a look at them.